Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist, Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable. And you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you... Uh, want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have questions about our True Skin Health products, or if you just have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll get your calls here in the bottom of the hour, as we always do, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All the longevity products are up at our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We also have blog posts, news stories, and videos at our websites, brightsidepen.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee, or you can order products at 866-735-2470. You can also sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business. If you're an entrepreneur, you can make your own, uh, set your own hours, be your own boss. Earn thank you checks associated with spreading the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You could be in business for yourself, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, and we can help you build your business as well. And if you have uh, uh, just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one time $25 fee, you can do that as well. Call 866 735 2470 for more info or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to give a plug to my Truth Skin Health formulations at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, thickeners, emulsifiers, silicon oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're highly concentrated. They last a really long time. And most important of all, they work, and they work well, and they work fast. And the results you get accrue, they get better and better and better over time. That's because your skin acts like a reservoir for the active material in our Truth Skin Health products. They're literally stored in the skin. The vitamin C and the vitamin A are stored in the skin. And that's why people notice when you use your Truth Treatment products, Truth Treatment formulations, your skin gets better and better. It looks better and better. It looks healthier and healthier over the course of time. And by that, I mean softer, moister, younger looking, less wrinkles, less fine lines. And the results, as I say, get better and better and better over time. Check all our truth, check out all our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the bright side. We're talking heart disease, which despite trillions of dollars spent, is still the leading cause of death and misery in this country and around the world. Heart disease is basically coronary, art, uh, coronary heart disease, which includes things like uh, our, uh, 
buildup in the uh, coronary arteries, buildups of plaque, buildups of cholesterol. Nonetheless, it is not the plaques and the cholesterol themselves that cause the heart, uh, heart disease, as we've talked about, because the heart has an ability to collateralize, that is, to form new vessels, to do natural bypasses. What it is that causes heart disease is the same thing that causes all health challenges. Heart is not special in that way. It's deterioration of tissue following secondary to, <clears throat> excuse me, secondary to inflammation, starvation, suffocation, and toxification of the cells. The biggest problem, or one of the biggest problems with how we address heart disease is our dependence on foundations and institutions and the medical model and drugs and pharmacology and surgery for what should be an issue that's based in how we live our lives. In other words, by far and away, the most important causes of coronary heart disease, strokes, angina, arrhythmias, thromboses, embolisms, clots, that is, circulatory problems, have nothing to do with medicine or the lack of medicine. And unfortunately, it's our abdication. It's our giving responsibility to the medical model. You take care of it. You take care of my business. It's an abdication of responsibility for what is our own business that is behind the epidemic. That's really the problem. If you want to cut right to the chase, it's us not doing our own business in terms of how we live our lives. That's what's behind the epidemic. And it's true about all, pretty much all health challenges, but it's really, really, really important when it comes to heart disease. Obviously, the heart is so functional and so critical. Yes, it's true, autoimmunity, any inflammatory diseases, skin diseases, neurological issues, these are all lifestyle issues. That's really the bottom line, folks. Health is about how we live our lives. It has nothing to do with Dr. Oz. It has nothing to do with any doctor. It has nothing to do with the medical model. It's our business. And that frees us, that liberates us from our drugs and our surgeries and our devices and our diagnostics and our insurances and our Obamacare's. And it has nothing, when it comes to heart disease, it has nothing to do with cholesterol or how much cholesterol you eat. And your cholesterol scores are irrelevant. They're nonsense. They're ignorant medicine. They're ignorant biochemistry. And it doesn't matter what your cholesterol score is when it comes to how heart healthy or how healthy in general we are. HDL, LDL, VLDL. Oh, you don't have enough good cholesterol. Oh, your bad cholesterol is too, too high. We need to get you on a statin drug. We're going to put you on a statin drug just in case. Now, the medical model has nothing to do with our health. Shouldn't. It doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with our health, and it, we shouldn't expect it to. But on the other hand, how we live our lives, how we eat, how we breathe, how we move, how we have our being has everything to do with cardiovascular health and circulatory health. And when it comes to heart disease or, or autoimmune disease or dementia or cancer or any illness, not only is how we live our lives a major leverage point, and that's really what we're talking here is leverage, leverage over our health. I love the idea of leverage. Sometimes people say, what's the, think, what's the greatest invention ever? And most times people say, well, the wheel was the greatest invention ever. I think the lever was the greatest invention ever. With a lever, a little tiny movement can give you a lot of action. That's what leverage is, when a small move gives you a lot of action. Leverage points are points where you can just do a tiny little, tiny little move and get a big response. And, and when it comes to our health, how we live our lives is the major leverage point. And you know what else? When it comes to diseases, when it comes to illnesses, disease can have a purpose. Disease can have a meaning. And it can be, it can be interpreted in a positive sense, diseases. And by that I mean a disease can become an invitation. An invitation for our, from our bodies to do something different, to change something about how we live our lives. We may not mentally appreciate the message. We may not. Nobody wants to be in pain and nobody wants to suffer. But if we use our pain or our discomfort or our suffering or our fear about our illness, and, and when you're sick, obviously there's a large fear component. There's fear that causes the illness. That is activation of the fear response, fear nervous system, and the illness itself causes fear. And nobody, I'm not saying it's a good thing to be in disease, but if we use our diseases to make a necessary change, 
Well, all of a sudden, our illness has a purpose. Our diseases become meaningful. I was watching this documentary yesterday on Glenn Campbell, who I, I kind of actually like Glenn Campbell a lot, Glenn Campbell's music. I was watching this really neat uh, a documentary. He died of Alzheimer's, or he died, I don't know, of all. He had Alzheimer's disease. He passed away last week. Anyway, I'll talk about that when we come back from our, from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. <laughs> the bright side pharmacist ben here we're on the air monday through friday eight to nine pacific 10 to 11 central time and 24 7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and critical health news i'm sorry ben fuchs archives.com and brightsideben.com we got longevity products at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com and you can also sign up to join the brightside ben team from pharmacistben.com brightsideben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. Try to call in early if you can. If you have questions about heart disease, if you're on a statin drug, or you're on some kind of, uh, any kind of medication, you want to wean yourself off of it, we can help you. If you're dealing with a health challenge that you or a loved one, uh, may need help with, we can help you with that too. 844-236-6010 is our number. So I was watching this video yesterday about Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell, the uh, country pop star, uh, great guitar player as it turns out, just a great musician. Uh, and uh, anyway, he had Alzheimer's disease. He, uh, uh, he ended up passing away. I don't know how he passed away, but he had Alzheimer's disease the last few years of life. his life. He still went on tour. He still, still played music. Interestingly, he never lost the ability to play guitar somehow. He, he had the disease and he was very forgetful and had all the symptoms pretty severe as, it, as he, uh, in, in his last days, uh, but he still could play guitar. Uh, but anyway, I was watching this video, and apparently he had a, a drug problem and a cocaine issue, and uh, he was addicted to alcohol and, uh, back in the 70s and 80s, and he completely turned his life around. And he was talking about how uh, he just took control of his life in his 40s. He, he treated his addiction, whether you think it's a disease or not. Some people say it's a disease. He treated his disease or he treated his addiction as a message, as a signal that he should change his life. And indeed, he changed his life. He quit, he quit drinking, he quit cocaine, he quit doing all of these things, cold turkey, and he completely changed his life. And he was talking about how his disease, this, on this video, he was talking about how his disease, he regarded his disease, his addiction, as a message, as a signal that he had to change his life, which he did. He ended up living another 40, 45 years, uh, completely drug-free and alcohol-free. And the point, what I thought of uh, as I was doing, uh, I was preparing to do my program today, what I was thinking of was we can all treat our illnesses that way. If we treat our illnesses as a sign that we need to change our lives, that we need to do something different, and all of a sudden, our diseases, our illnesses become purposeful. They become meaningful. Not that they're, it's something you want to be celebrating and you want to be happy about, but it, you can use your illness, you can use your disease as a signal to change your life. Your, this, the way you live your life physically, the way you live your life mentally, emotionally. And make no mistake about it, our, um, the emotional component of our health is key. In the last few programs, we've been talking about the relationship between our emotional nature and the health of the heart and the health of the circulatory system the, and the health of the blood vessels, the health of the blood circulation and the heart in general. And all of this has to do with the idea of coherence, which can be thought of as a state of high efficiency, of high physical efficiency, where all the symptoms, all the systems of the body, the nervous system, the respiratory system, the immune system, the digestive system, the hormone system, all of these systems are working in harmony. They're all working in peak efficiency. It's kind of like music. A coherent system, a coherent uh, uh, body, a coherent system that, that where the, the, all of the various parts, the, the heart and the respiratory system, the nervous system, et cetera, where these all function in a unified way, leads to peak efficiency. And we said it's the heart that's the master conductor. The heart is the master conductor that determines the efficiency of all the systems in the body. And this ability to affect coherence is a function of the heart wave, the heartbeat. The heartbeat or the heart wave carries information to all of the other systems of the body. And when the heart wave and all of the systems in the body are operating in a, in a harmony, we say that the body is in coherence. So the heart is responsible for the coherence of the body. That's the importance of the heart. 
We've been told for years that the heart is a pump. And it is kind of a pump, but it's certainly not able to pump all of the five gallons of blood through the 60,000 miles of blood vessels. That occurs electromagnetically. The circulatory system circulates electromagnetically. It's the electromagnetic uh, uh, re uh, relationship between the blood and the particles in the blood, the pieces in the blood, the stuff in the blood, and the blood vessels. That makes the stuff in the blood really important, and it makes the blood vessels really important. This is why dirty blood is such a problem. It interferes with the flow. It interferes with the electromagnetic reaction or electromagnetic relationship between the liquid and the vessel. The liquid and the vessel relate to each other electronically, electromagnetically, and that's what accounts for the pull. That's why glucosamine is so important, and hyaluronic acid is so important, and silicon is so important for heart functioning. All of these, and, and, connect, and uh, collagen, and gelatin, and bone soup, all of these components build the blood vessel, and they build the blood. That's why digestive strategies are so important to clean the blood. That's why dirty blood is so relevant when it comes to health. That's why dirty blood is behind all health issues, because it interferes with the electromagnetic relationship between the blood and the vessel that allows the blood to circulate. Scientists call this electromagnetic, the electromagnetic nature of the blood, the zeta potential, Z-E-T-A. It's not cholesterol. It's the blood and the blood vessels. Who has control over the blood and the, blood and the health of the blood vessels? We do through what we eat, through how we supplement, through how we breathe, through our lifestyle. There's nothing a statin drug can do. There's nothing your doctor can do to make that better. Again, it's a lifestyle issue. There's also a, an emotional aspect to coherence. And when the heart is functioning as it should be, we will be emotionally stable as well. And it goes the other way around. We can use emotional vulnerability or illness or mental illness as a sign that our heart wave coherence has somehow been disturbed. So the heart affects the emotions, the emotions affect the heart. It works both ways. The heart has its own type of brain made up of neurons that function uh, similar to and, and communicate with the emotional part of our brain. There's a direct connection, a hotline between the cells in the heart and the limbic system or the emotional center of the brain. It's like a hotline. It goes right to the emotional center. The cells of the heart, the, the neurons that are located in the heart, the brain cells that are located in the heart are communicating instantaneously with the emotional center of the brain. Disturbances and emotions getting thrown off center when a threat occurs, a perceived threat, a real threat. When we get thrown off somehow, we get, our emotions get disturbed. This causes incoherence. This causes a disturbance in the connection or the relationship between the heart and the other systems of the body. According to Dr. Roland McCready of HeartMath, quote, the rhythmic patterns generated by the heart are not only reflective of emotions, but actually play a key role in influencing moment-to-moment -moment emotional perception and experience, unquote. This emotional aspect of heart health is where modern medicine misses the boat when it comes to heart disease. And in my opinion, it's the major reason for the utter failure of the science of medical cardiology and the... Uh, the advice, so-called advice, that comes to us from the American Heart Association and, so, and other foundations and institutions when it comes to dealing with heart disease. In addition to emotions, there's also an important relationship between the breath and coherence. This is why a major component of what I call the bright side philosophy involves breathing and the breath. This is what the breath does. The breath, when it's done correctly, breathing, when it's done correctly, restores the heart and the other systems of the body back into coherence. If you want to experience decoherence or incoherence, just hold your breath. Hold your breath right now. And what you'll notice after 10 or 15 or 20 seconds of holding your breath. Hi, this is Right side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. 
So before we went to break, we are talking a little bit about incoherence and decoherence. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow, how you can uh, experience decoherence with the breath, how you can experience what happens to the body when it goes out of rhythm, when the, d the different parts of uh, the different systems and the different components in the body do not cohere, they're not harmonious, and we can experience this ourselves with our breath. And, and uh, alternatively or conversely, by using the breath, we can restore the rhythms back, uh, the coherence or the rhythms, the appropriate rhythms rhythms back to the body. This is one of the major ideas when it comes to the bright side philosophy. If you're dealing with arrhythmias, that is the heart being out of rhythm, fibrillations, or any cardiovascular health issue, or anxiety for that matter, which is another sign of incoherence or decoherence, slow, deep, rhythmic, rhythmic is the key here, rhythmic breathing can restore the body back into coherence. It's one of the main mechanisms for restoring the uh, the body back in co into coherence, and uh, there's a second mechanism. We'll talk about this tomorrow as we continue talking about uh, decoherence, incoherence, coherence, and the health of the body, specifically the health of the heart. And if you're dealing with heart disease, it's not about cholesterol. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment, so hang tight. From the Journal of Nutrition, a low iodine intake among pregnant women may be associated with poor language development, reduced fine motor skills, and behavioral problems when the child is three years old. And these are findings that were uh, uh, deduced from the Norwegian Mother and Child Cohort Study that was published in the Journal of Nutrition last month. Iodine is super important. Everybody talks about iodine for the thyroid. We hear about this all the time. Well, iodine's important for thyroid hormone. Yes, that's true. But if you have a thyroid gland problem, iodine is not going to make a difference. Iodine's important for the activity of the hormone that comes out of the thyroid, but it's not going to help you with the thyroid. I'm not saying iodine is not important for folks dealing with hypothyroidism. It can be helpful. But if you have a poorly functioning thyroid, you've got to work on the gland, not the hormone. How do you work on the gland? Well, you lower your cortisol, you relax the body, you stabilize your blood sugar, and you work on digestive health. It's not a question of iodine. On the other hand, iodine supplementation can help not only help you make thyroid hormone or help activate thyroid hormone, but it, can also, it is also important for the developing brain. And it starts in the womb. Moms who are pregnant, use iodorol. Use an iodine supplement. I would say eat fish, which is a great source of fish oil, which is in addition to uh, being a good source of iodine. But now we got the problem with mercury in your fish. Nonetheless, eating seafood and fish can also be very helpful. You know, we hear about mercury in, in seafood, but what we don't always hear about is that mercury also, or the seafood also contains selenium and also sulfur which tend to tie up that mercury and keep it from becoming available to the body. Nonetheless, you probably don't want to eat a lot of fish or, or shellfish if you are pregnant. But you do want to supplement with iodine, and it's probably a good idea to get on an omega-3 fatty acid supplement like the Ultimate EFAs. 25 mil, uh, you need a lot more iodine than, than, than we hear about uh, from, our, uh, uh, from our medical model. 100, I, th I think the medical folks are telling you, uh, that you need something like 12.5 micrograms or 125 micrograms. You probably need it more along the line of 12.5 milligrams of iodine. You can get that from iodorol capsules or iodorol tablets, which are readily available. Iodine is also important for the glands, including the breasts. If you're dealing with fibrocystic breasts or any kind of breast, breast health issues or any reproductive health issues, iodine supplementation can help you there as well. From the Journal of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venerology, psoriasis and psychiatric illnesses, what are the links? Well, it turns out that there is a connection between the physical symptoms of psoriasis and also emotional or psychiatric issues like anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, and uh, other odd behavior or, or behavioral health issues. What is that link? Inflammation. Yes, inflammation is behind all physical health challenges, but did you know inflammation can be behind psychological health challenges? Depression can be a sign of inflammation. Anxiety can be a sign of inflammation. How does this work? Well, when there are inflammatory factors in the blood, say you have inflammatory factors in the blood following starvation, suffocation, and toxification of cells, inflammatory factors float in the blood. Also, body fat secretes inflammatory factors in the blood. So if you're carrying too much body fat or you have some kind of underlying health condition, these inflammatory factors go into the blood. The brain is constantly reading the blood 
And as the brain reads the blood, it sees these inflammatory factors and it goes, oh my gosh, our survival is threatened. That's what inflammatory factors tell the brain. Our survival is being threatened. And when the body survival, when the brain thinks the survival is being threatened, anxiety will be induced. Long-term anxiety can lead to depression. Long-term anxiety can lead to suicidal ideation. Long-term anxiety or long-term cortisol secretion associated with anxiety can lead to all kinds of psychiatric problems. And thus, inflammation is the common factor behind psoriasis and psychiatric illness, behind all health challenges and psychiatric illnesses. How do you keep inflammation down? You nutriate your body. You breathe deeply and rhythmically and slowly. You make sure you're stabilizing your blood sugar. You do everything you can do to reduce your body fat. Remember, body fat is going to uh, upregulate or stimulate the secretion of inflammatory factors. You exercise. You do all the things we need to do to stay healthy. And none of it has anything to do with a doctor. All right, 844 is our number. Let's go to uh, Stuart in Denver. Good morning, Stuart. Oh, I just lost you, Stuart. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button, buddy. Call back and, and, uh, and we'll get you up here. And I also have a, I have a letter that I've been meaning to read. Let me find that letter here. Call back, Stuart, and we'll get, you, we'll get you first up. I've been meaning to read this letter that I got uh, about cold sores from a guy named Kevin. Kevin, I know you're listening. I think you're listening. Uh, Kevin says, a uh, couple quick questions. Number one, I've taken lysine for cold sores. Is lysine available in longevity? No, it's not available in longevity, unfortunately. Uh, lysine is a very interesting supplement. As it turns out, there's a relationship between lysine, L-Y-S-I-N-E, and uh, arginine. It turns out that lysine antagonizes arginine, and cold sores, or the virus that causes cold sores, are arginine users. Arginine is a kind of growth substance, and the viruses, the virus that causes cold sores, arginine dependent. By using lysine, you can antagonize the arginine, block the arginine, make it less available for the virus. Thus, the importance of using lysine. You want to use your lysine uh, uh, just when you feel that tingle. If you get cold sores, you know what I'm talking about. There's a little tingle that you get right in your, right where the cold sore is about to appear. Right when you feel that tingle, that's the time to pound the lysine, like a gram, a gram of lysine every hour. It's non-toxic. You don't have to worry about overdosing on it. And if you do about a gram every hour, right after you feel that tingle, or as soon as you feel that tingle, many folks will notice that they either don't get the cold sore, or that cold sore is, uh, uh, is much smaller, and you recover from the cold sore much more quickly. So I hope that helps, Kevin. Uh, Kevin has a second question here. You mentioned N-acetylcysteine. Is that available at Longevity? Negative. It's not available from Longevity. You've got to go to the health food store and get N-acetylcysteine. I recommend 400 or so milligrams a day, especially if you're on medication, especially uh, if you're drinking alcohol. If you take your N-acetylcysteine before you go out drinking and after you go out drinking, your hangover will be less intense. It's a wonderful liver nutrient. In fact, it is a liver. Uh, it is used as liver medicine in emergency rooms. I include it in my blemish repair complex. And again, I recommend 400 milligrams or so. We're, we're not done talking about N-acetylcysteine. There's lots of, lots of reasons why you want to use that stuff every day. Okay, we'll get to you here. Uh, hang on, Stuart. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. Time to hit the phones. And now we got you, Stuart. Good morning, buddy. How you doing, Good Stuart? Good morning. How you doing? Good. Wasn't I going to be doing uh, a talk somewhere for you, Stuart? Yeah, I'm still working on it. Yeah, for people with disabilities. they re We really need it. Uh, we just went through a whole thing of all these doctors got some people off of their psychotropic and nice. then we're surprised that they relapsed and asked to be put back on them. Wait a minute. Did they get them off the psychotropics <laughs> and, and give them any other strategies to change their lives, or they just took them off the psychotropics? No, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> I just had one client that I recommended B vitamins to, and then he asked his doctor. His doctor said, yeah, I read something about that. Yeah, it's on the black label on the psychotropic you've been prescribing for years and years and years and years. You know, and it also right, have you seen that the, now? There's a commercial now, now for, about the relapse. Yeah, there's a com there's a commercial now. I don't know if you've seen this where they uh, they talk about this terrible side effect that now comes with psychotropics called akathasia, which is like a movement disorder. Uh, have you seen this? And now they want to give you drugs uh, for the akathasia. 
for yeah, the movement yeah, disorders. For the, for the that's one of the yeah. that's one of the major side effects with psychotropic drugs. And anybody who's on psychotropic uh, psycho, psychotropic kinds of medication, antipsychotic medications, especially for a long period of time, can tell you that they have these kind of ticks that they develop, movement disorders that they develop because the these kinds of drugs rag out your brain. They dissolve yeah. your brain. They don't and work they because they're kind to your neurology. They work because right. they're destroying your neurology. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Stuart. And we also have quite a few people now that are revolutionized against showing that the meta studies show that they don't actually work. And they don't actually work. Prescribed. Right. Yeah. The meta studies, yeah. there's a guy named Erwin Ir- Ir- Kirsch. I believe his last name is K I R S C H. He wrote a, you know what I'm talking about? The Emperor's New Drugs, where he did, yep. did the, he did all the meta studies. He analyzed all the meta studies and he found that they don't work any better than placebos, especially antidepressants, That's especially right. well, the they, serotonin they reuptake this, inhibitors. Yeah, they What's have that? this new thing called active placebo. So if you see a commercial <laughs> I love with a side effect on it and then you take the drug and you get the side effect, then you think that the drug is working. It's an active like placebo. That that, that reminds me. That sounds like alternative yeah. facts. I rem, that reminds me of alternative yeah. facts. That's the active placebos. I love it. Yeah. So the the little <laughs> warning at the end of the commercial, besides death, is actually making people think that the drug works. So after right. they ask their doctor. It's yeah. it's an active so, placebo. Yeah, we know it's a placebo, yeah. but it's an active placebo. I love the idea yeah, of a placebo, were, Stuart. We Stuart, you're a magician. Yeah, by seeing it over and over. Yeah. You're a magician, right? Yeah. 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 So magic, magic and placebos kind of work the same way. They take oh, advantage yeah. of the brain's expectations of what the brain expects. Exactly. And if you the, make the a smarter people are, the easier they are to fool. Right, because they know they have expectations about how things should be. That is, isn't that how magic I, works? I, I, you you play on right. people's expectations. I, I, I perform for magicians quite a bit, and they're actually the easiest to fool. Is that interesting? That's that's very interesting. Why is that? Because they have expectations. They see something that they think they've seen before, and then they're uh-huh. not really paying attention. Uh-huh. That's the power of the beginner's mind, if you've ever heard that term, beginner's mind. Yeah. That's why you always want to have beginner's mind. When I talk to people on the phone, when I'm doing consulting or helping people out, I always say you've got to not have a belief about what's good and what's bad. Because people will say things like, oh, but I eat really well. I only eat good foods. Yeah. I'm off of gluten, but I'm yeah. still sick. You know, So I say forget yeah, what you know about a good food. <laughs> Is it cereal good for you? Oh, no. Yeah. It's actually patented as a bowel irritant for people C- in institutions that couldn't, you know, clean their bowels. Is that true about cereal? Uh, I didn't cereal. know that. Yeah. Yeah. The history of cereal is like, and it was actually banned by the FDA, but it, I don't think it was called the FDA back then, but uh, because people were dying from eating only cereal because they thought it was healthy because of the advertising. And then that's when they started fortification of our food. Uh, how interesting is that? Cere- Kellogg. Yeah, Ke- I, I remember ce- the history of cereal involves the, the, Kel- the guy Kellogg. He was the guy who invented cereal, uh, breakfast yeah. cereal. And he invented it as a laxative, I think. He was, he was big on animals yeah, well, and keeping the bowels clean. It's patented as a medical food. It's patented as a medical food. Yeah, it's a bowel irritant is what the patent says. Interesting. All right. Hey, I got some calls I got to get to, Stuart. What's going on today? Uh, so I was just reading online, and I, I couldn't find it again to give you the source, but uh, there's people that are doing Linus Pauling, uh, you know, uh, experiments and stuff that he was, you know, nobody else Vitamin C? them, so they, so they call him a quack. But they're doing it with uh, liposomal. Uh, uh-huh. Vitamin C? Vitamin C. And so that he was using natural sources, or he was using citrus oils or something originally, just like the English, you know, they were called limeys because they carried barrels of lime, and mm-hmm. they ate the whole fruit, including the rind. Mm. That's get, the thing about vitamin C. Yeah, you hear people periodically talking about how vitamin C is not really a vitamin, and you got to have the whole fruit, and that's not true. That's that's actually patently false. The cells themselves only use vitamin C. Nonetheless, in a whole fruit, you get the other factors that support the vitamin C, especially the so-called flavonoids, which we've been talking about, or we had talked about in the past, and we'll continue talking about. The flavonoids help support vitamin C, vitamin C's absorption and assimilation into the blood. But at the level of the cell, at the, where the vitamin C is actually doing its work, it is ascorbate, not the fruit. 
not the lime, right. not the pepper, not the whole complex that gets into the cell. So for anybody who ever hears that vitamin C is not a vitamin, that is ignoramus talk. Vitamin C is most certainly a vitamin, and by definition, a vitamin is a substance that just cures a deficiency disease. Vitamin C alone, pure ascorbic acid, does that. And the benefits of ascorbic acid, just ascorbic acid injected into your bloodstream, are so voluminous and so well-researched. There are so many yeah. important reasons why vitamin C is, is, is critical as vitamin C, as ascorbic acid. Now, I'm not saying that you, you don't need the foods that support the ascorbic acid, the bioflavonoids that are contained in the limes and the lemons and other foods. Those are definitely important, but anybody who tells you that vitamin C is not a vitamin does not understand biochemistry. I'm sorry, uh, well, you did you have that, anything else? Yeah, you use that, you use the liposomal or whatever in your skin cream. And this treatise was saying that some of the original uh, in vitro, no, in vitro, right, in the dish, in the Petri dish, whatever, yeah, in vitro. Uh, studies that he did, that's what he was using was a combination. So it wasn't just the isolate. And so that there were certain properties of it, especially in the cell membrane, where that's the where the fatty. Vitamin, that's why. That's why the fatty yeah. vitamin C is so important. The stuff I always talk about. And that's the only vitamin C I formulate with is fatty vitamin C. Stuart, I'm going to let you go, buddy. I want to get to a couple more calls. Is that okay? All right. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Good to talk to you this morning. All right. Let's go to John in Arizona. Welcome, John, to the bright side. How you doing, man? John, do we have John? No, John. I don't see. I don't hear John. I'm, okay, well, you got him. Okay, John's away from his phone. Uh, do we have John back now? I don't. I don't want to hang up on John. He's been holding. Johnny. Okay. All right. No worries. Sorry, John. We tried you. I hate when I leave people on hold. You got to call in early on the bright side, you guys. 844-236-6010. Now the lines are all going crazy. But that's all the time we have for today, unfortunately. Please check out my True Skin Health products made with fat-soluble vitamin C. What Stuart was saying is absolutely correct. Liposomal vitamin C or fat solubility will definitely improve the, uh, the, the body's utilization at the cell level of vitamin C. But you don't need to go into liposomal vitamin C if you're using fatty. Liposome is like a bubble that carries vitamin C, but if you use a fatty form of vitamin C, you'll get much, much, much more ascorbic acid or vitamin C benefits, especially when you're using it topically. Topical vitamin C is, along with vitamin A, one of the two most important skincare ingredients you could ever use. In fact, if you're not using vitamin C and vitamin A in their correct forms, vitamin A in the retinol form or the retinoic acid form, and vitamin C in the fatty form, ascorbyl palmitate or tetraisopalmitate form, you are truly missing the boat on anti-aging skincare. And if you're looking for good products that contain ascorbyl palmitate or, or contain ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate, look no further than our Truth Skin Health products made with generous amounts, up to 70% of ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate fatty vitamin C in our Truth uh, Transdermal C Serum, our Truth Transdermal C Balm also has a big dose of fatty vitamin C. Even our Truth Retinol 5% Gel has a huge dose of fat-soluble vitamin C. You can find out about all our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And of course, you can find all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Hopefully, some of you guys uh, who are listening to the program and who are longevity distributors are coming to the convention, which is uh, the longevity convention in Dallas, which is coming up uh, this Wednesday through Saturday. And I will be doing a couple of talks there on dementia and Alzheimer's disease and neurological health. So if you're in the Dallas area or if you're thinking of coming to the convention in Dallas from wherever, please make sure you stop by one of my talks or, or stop me if you see me in the hotel and say hello. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I want to encourage you to join the Bright Side Ben team. Call 866-735-2470 and you can start a longevity business, which we can help you build. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, spectacular, beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. Thank you.